Hello, this is Sandra Hart and welcome today. Did you know that if you change your story, you can change the direction and the outcome of your life? It's never too late. I used to ride with the wind to see which way she would blow. I hitched a ride to take me with her where she chose to go. I swirled and danced, flew high with the stars, tumbled head over heels. Her will chose ours. Swooping, dizzingly through the trees down, sweeping teasingly high over the moon's crown. When I was young, I hitched a ride with the wind to see which way she would blow. Welcome to Life Over 60. We all have a story, don't we? We all have an inner narrative that nobody else knows about, but that we only tell ourselves. Perhaps it is that uh, you're too old. Perhaps that, oh, I'm not that kind of person. Perhaps it's that you are a victim. Whatever story and whatever narrative we are telling ourselves inside, that is what we become. Our story that we tell ourselves is so, so powerful that it can become a reality. It is so important that the story we tell is one we want to live. And do you know what? It is never too late. You are never too old to change your story. And what is your story? Your story is what you want to do while you're here on this earth, how you, what you want to achieve, how you want to be able to do things of your dreams, those are things that are involved in our story. And honestly, trust me, you are never too late. If you change your story, no matter how old you are, the outcome to your life will be so much better and you can change the outcome by giving yourself an inner narrative that is not where you are right now. You know, you might say, oh, my life is worse than anybody else's. I just, it just won't change. But that is absolutely not true. Let's discuss how changing that story can really empower you in your life. I'm going to give you two examples right now of people that I've known in my life who have changed their stories. One of them realized that she had a power to change her story and she did it and she kept that story no matter what negatives were going on around her. She followed that narrative and she was able to achieve what she wanted to achieve in her life. The second one started out with her own narrative, her self-belief, and her ability to have the power to live her story, and then something changed in her life, and she lost her story. The first one is my friend Donna. I met her when my husband and I bought our first house. We had two little children. She lived in the neighborhood, had two little children. We both sang in a chorus and we became very good friends. Donna was a teacher. She went to college her, from a, a middle class background. Her parents always wanted her to get an education and be a teacher. 
So she became a teacher. She got married and had two wonderful children. But in reality, Donna was didn't like teaching, and she was very unhappily married. I had so many conversations with her. Donna, you can change that. Why are you unhappy when you don't have to be? What is right for you is not always right for someone else, but you know your own story. Well, Donna finally got it. She quit teaching, got a divorce, became a producer at a local television station and did wonderful documentaries. But still in my conversations with her, and I had since moved, as we grew older, she still was unhappy, even though she was successful. She said, I'm really unhappy. I know what I want to do. I want to join the Peace Corps. Now, Donna was 50 years old. Her children had grown, so they were, you know, out on their own. I, and I said, okay, Donna, if that's what you want to do, go for it. So she shared that with me. Donna was assigned to one of the poorest countries in the world, Nicaragua. She went to Nicaragua at 50 uh, in the Peace Corps. And shortly after she was there, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So she had to come home. Devastated, she felt, you know, she had one battle to fight, and that was cancer. But the other battle to fight was living her story and living out her dream. Well, while she was battling cancer and going through chemotherapy, she started to study Spanish. Became pretty proficient in Spanish during the time that she was in chemotherapy. She finally got the, the white flag that she could uh, she was cured of cancer. She could go back, and she went back to Nicaragua. Donna is my hero. She has devoted her life to what she felt she was meant to do. As a documentarian, she helped uh, do a film on the poor people of Nicaragua. Now, those children, a lot of them are on drugs. They sniff glue because they're unhappy. Uh, the animals are walking the streets. She set up veterinarian uh, clinics. She had uh, doctors from the United States come down and six weeks at a time program to help neuterize, uh, neuter the dogs and help find home for the dogs. She took the children. She opened up a school for the children. She also opened up a cafe. Uh, and, you know, coffee is a big industry in Nicaragua. She opened up a cafe where those children could come and talk and work and share their feelings. She not only helped the children of Nicaragua, she helped the economy. She also helped the animals. And I'm going to link a film below that it's about an hour long that was done on her and her work in Nicaragua. She was also honored in Washington, D.C. for her humanitarian work while she was there. So this is a person that, although when she was 50, she had so many negative people around her saying, oh, you know, you've got a great job here. You're a producer of documentaries. Why do you want to give everything up and go to Nicaragua? You're too old. You won't be able to do that. You don't speak Spanish. She shut out all of those negative things in her life, and she lived her dream. And that is someone who has taken their dream and lived it. The second person in my life was my cousin Carolyn. She grew up in a blue-collar family, lived next door to us. She was 10 years older than I was, but she was so pretty, and I always looked up to her. Well, she won a contest in our town. It was a sesquicentennial, and she became queen by selling the most tickets. Her prize was either a screen uh, test in Hollywood or $500. Smart as she was, she knew her dream. She took the $500, got on a train, came to New York, booked a room at the Hotel Barbizon for women, and within a week or two, she had a job with one of the biggest uh, modeling agencies in New York, the Ford Modeling Agency. And while she was at the Barbizon, she befriended a girl from Philadelphia who wanted to be an actress. They became lifelong friends, and her name was Grace Kelly. Carolyn was living the dream on the covers of magazines, 
a photograph by the most famous photographers, had a beautiful friend who was becoming very famous in Hollywood. She was always in the celebrity pages of the papers in New York City. She was believing in her story and was writing it and living how she wanted to live. And then she got married. And all of a sudden, her story stopped because her story became his story. She made the mistake of giving up everything that she wanted in her story and allowed him to manipulate her, to cheat on her, to use her money to build a great big house and took her away from modeling in New York City, where she was very happy, and took her out into a beautiful home in Long Island, but she was isolated and away from everyone. She eventually wound up penniless in a homeless shelter for women in New York City and with undiagnosed postpartum depression. She stopped her story and let someone else take over her story. That is the difference. You, your story, and you have so much power to live your story. I know your story is all the mistakes you have made, all the missteps that you have had, all the positive things that you have done in your life and all the achievements that you have made. Those all make up your story. And the only difference is if you learn from those missteps and you learn from those negative things that have happened in your life to propel you forward so that you can live your story. You may think that your path is set right now and where you are right now in your story will be forever, but it is not. How you talk about your life has a really profound effect on how your story is going to go. There are so many negative things today going on around us with the media, the politics, uh, COVID, really a very, very stressful situation, and those we have no control over. But we do have control over our powerful story. How we talk about the main events in our life can be, be very powerful and profound. And instead of trying to be perfect, instead of dwelling on our mistakes, try to Think about the balance in your life. I mean, we make mistakes. Let's accept those mistakes and move on and learn from them. But it's the balance that really is the most important thing that we can do in our lives. You're never too old. You are absolutely never too old to change your story. Right now, I'm going to give you five things that will help you Use the power of your story to rewrite it. The first thing is I want you to focus on your habits, your good habits, your bad habits, and maybe think about some of those things that are holding you back. Number two, I want you to write down and practice every day being positive and thinking forward instead of thinking backward. When you focus on that and you get all that negativity out of your mind, it helps you to move forward. The third thing is I want you to get rid of all negative people in your life. I can't impress about how important that is. And I've mentioned this maybe a thousand times in all of my talks to you. Surround yourself with good people. That is so extremely important. And Surround yourself also in your mind with reality. Do your give yourself a reality check every day. You know, is this really what I want to do? Is this where I want to go? 
And the fifth thing I want you to do is to keep taking risks because some of those risks may lead you to answers to the next chapters in your life. Step out of your comfort zone and take a risk. And you may be very surprised as to what you find and where it will lead you. I hope this has helped some of you today. Thank you so much for coming and and sharing this time with me. And if you are where you want to be, and if your story is written just the way you want it to be, please put the comments below because what you have done may help someone else in this community who needs your thoughts. I really appreciate each and every one of you that have come here today. Please be good to yourself. Be kind to someone today. Do something really nice for someone. Tell them that you love them. And of course, let's try to put love out into the universe. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here with me. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'm enjoying your comments. And I hope to see you in my next video.